So uh, I want to introduce myself. My name's Tim. This is Nathan. We're the two co-founders of CoTap. So, you know, it's really good to see everybody here. I see like so many familiar faces uh, because as you all know, as students, for those of you who are participants in CoTap, it's an intense experience as a student, which we design for you, right? But you may or, not, may or may not realize that it's an intense experience for the teaching staff as well. <laughs> uh, because remember that when you're filing issues at 2 a.m. in the morning, we're receiving those issues at 2 in the morning, and there's a lot more of you guys. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because my wife, who's sitting here, uh, over, over here, um, about a, giving away our, our swag, um, She's like forbidden me from answering support issues anymore over the weekends. And so whenever I answer them, I have to like sneak to the bathroom and be like, you know, really quickly do it. But that's, that's how committed I am to you guys. So uh, what I, we want to be quick here and, and have as much time for you all to just enjoy the demos and just like enjoy some of the food and, and drinks here and meet each other. So we'll, me and Nathan will try to be as brief as possible. So. Uh, a lot of you here are CodePath alumni. Some of you are thinking about taking our class. Uh, and so we haven't had much of a chance, even with our students, to share a little bit about um, kind of the vision of where we're, we're taking CodePath. And it's definitely something that we want you guys to be a part of and to watch along with us. And so I wanted to take a moment here to, to talk about that. So as you may or may not know the kind of the origin story of CodePath. Uh, so me and Nathan were sitting around. We, we knew we wanted to start a company. And we knew we wanted to you know, be in education. So it's like, uh, change, edu change education, change the world, right? So that was our, our naive thinking. It's like, I don't know anything about education. We're just going to hop in here, and we're going to do it. And we were motivated by a problem that we understood really well, which is engineers, when you're learning new technologies, it's really inefficient, right? We all do it, but um, the secret is, is that uh, you know, it's gruelingly time consuming and not particularly efficient. You know, it's, it's hundreds of hours reading Stack Overflow posts that are out of date or inaccurate, or unfortunately, usually a beginner writes Stack Overflow posts, and so it's, you kind of have to be like, okay, they got it working, but that can't be the right way. And so you try to like back your way into what the right way is, right? So we said to ourselves, what if we designed a training program that was specifically tailored towards senior engineers? Uh, something they would enjoy, especially since they have the option of learning it themselves later. And we later on added on the design class. And so over the past three years, you all have been our guinea pigs, because it's kind of funny to see the history of the code class classes here, because I can almost look at you and recognize like the little thing that we tried that time um, that was different, right? Because this is our little bit of a, a test kitchen in San Francisco for our education system. And so we have a lot of little tricks that we've built up, and I just want to highlight two main learnings that we had, which I think provided the core of the, uh, the magic that we have. So the first interesting one, and I think the one you understand, is that we make the class as gruelingly hard as we possibly can. You know, whenever we see people like struggling, we just like make it even harder, because why not? <laughs> and so uh, it's kind of funny, but that's actually totally counterintuitive. Maybe it makes sense to you now, but if you look at some of the education solutions that are out there now, they're trying to do these broad, broad appeal education solutions. And I think what happens is they see that a lot of people fail. And so what, what, what do they do is they, they actually say, well, you know what, I guess I'll make it easier. I'll actually back off. Of it. I think it's, that's a very natural, intuitive thing to do, right? If, someone's, if like 50% of the people are failing your class, you probably back up on it a little bit, right? So 50% of the people were failing our classes. And we're like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna go the other way. I'm actually going to make it ridiculously harder. I'm going to do things like I'm going to kick you out of the class if you don't do the homework. Some of you here, we, you've had personal talks from us where you say, you know what, you know, you're out of the class, you, you know, fought your way back in. Um, and that one trick uh, raised our matriculation rates to over 90%, and the assessment kind of went through the roof in terms of can you actually do mobile development. And so um, the other kind of trick is something that like, I think was really close to Nathan's heart, Nathan's going to talk about. Yeah, so I think uh, challenge is number one, but the other thing we've seen, I think more than anything that completely changes the way learning works, is when you pair the challenge with the appropriate level of authentic mentorship, right? The real one-on-one -on -one human mentorship that isn't just about the technical transfer of knowledge, but it's also about maintaining an authentic relationship in terms of providing them understandings of this is okay, being frustrated is okay, and like you can do this and you will push through. 
And I've had conversations with people at 2 a.m. when they actually, I actually call them. And, I t and they're like, I think I'm going to drop out of the class. It's too difficult. And I tell them, OK, that's, if that's your choice. But let me tell you, I've seen a million people do this. I've seen a million people survive it and be glad they finished and then move on to do something with it that was really impactful. And I think that for me, you cannot just say, I'm going to change education by widening access. Widening access is one small piece of the equation, but access alone does not change education, right? If you think back to why you got into the field that you're in, why you're excited about the things that you're excited about, I would almost argue that for many of you, you could probably trace it back personally to an individual, right? Somebody who was there to help you get started, a family member, a cousin, a friend, a professor, a teacher, whatever the case may be. There's usually one or more individuals as people that got you not just the technical knowledge, but also built that relationship that made you believe that it was possible for you to succeed in that discipline. And I believe access combined with mentorship and relationship and then opportunity, those are the three pieces of effective education, right? Access, mentorship, and opportunity. You can't teach somebody and then go walk away, good luck, right? You have to have a plan to get them connected to real opportunities after they learn. And I think that those three things they're often overlooked, right? Think about a lot of the online education that exists today. And I'll tell you, an online forum is cool. A message board is cool, but it's not enough, all right? I've seen this personally time and time again. It's those human relationships that matter. That's what helps you survive the frustration. That's what helps you complete the class. And ultimately, that's what helps you allow the class to change your life rather than just be something you learn once and then you walk away. And so it's something I, I've taken away personally in my own life. I have a few mentors who completely changed the, directory of my, uh, the trajectory of my life. And I suspect most of you here have something similar. That is, I think, the core of what we're trying to do with CodePath, is help people find those mentors, help people get the access, but then again, coupled with the human relationship. So uh, I think that for me, that's probably uh, the biggest learning I've seen, is the validation of that as we've went through this program and tried to scale it, is don't forget about the relationships. So we're about to take this equation that we've built and uh, kind of take it to uh, the next level, because SF always have, has the privilege of getting the, the early adoption first, right? But uh, if we only were in San Francisco, I think that would be a huge failure. So what we're doing next is to see if we can duplicate this playbook in 100 different sites. That was, that's kind of our mission, 100 CodePath sites um, all over the world, uh, running this format. Uh, so where you have the intensity, the pursuit of excellence, the, like, the no excuses type way, the, I used to call it the P90X way of learning mobile development. Um, so can we take that and, like CrossFit, sweep the nation like, like they did? Uh, so what we're, the experiment that we're working on with now is uh, we're unrolling this at Facebook, Walmart, and Yahoo right now, where we're actually teaching them how to replicate our boot camp uh, internally in those companies. Uh, so our mission is to kind of take it through company after company and teach them this way of having continuous learning. Imagine that if every company you had, you know, had this option, not, not within uh, CodePath, but just within your individual company. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're hitting up the university. So I ran a pilot at Stanford. I ran the same exact format, eight-week format at Stanford a couple months ago, where we actually had the students co-teaching with me. I had five TAs, because essentially I was trying to start like an honor society in, within Stanford, um, where they had, I had five TAs kind of committing to do all the assignments ahead of time. I had a student instructor and kind of monitoring that. So imagine, again, because Stanford, who cares about Stanford? Because Stanford gets all the privilege anyway. But really, it's, it's, like, it's like all the other universities that don't have iOS classes, that don't have Android classes, uh, but we want to see if we can test our models into. So I think that's, that's where we're going with that direction. And in six weeks, I'm really, really happy to announce that we're having our first high school class that's running. It's going to be our, our, our format. Um, so that's kind of I think, we're, I think we're early days with us, and we're really happy that you guys are with us. But like, um, I think that's, that's the trajectory that we're going. But SF will always be kind of our lab. So uh, I think, Nathan, you want to tell us about what we have in the, what we yeah. in the SF lab? Uh, the, the vision is fun, but let's get down to business. So the real reason we're all here is we really are not here for us. We're here to celebrate what the current cohort has been able to do. So I just want to quickly remind everybody who has not been through our programs what people had to survive to get to this demo day. Right. So. Each cohort, we have about 100 or people across three platforms, all right? 100 people across uh, iOS, Android, and design. So accumulating. 
there's about something like 30 to 40 teams that are competing across all, four, uh, all three platforms. And the way it works is eight weeks ago, all right, cast your mind back in the past two months, most of these people, in the case of in engineers, had never built a mobile app or even tried to even look at it in some cases for, at all before that. So they came in completely greenfield on mobile, having never developed a mobile app before eight weeks ago. Designers, I would say, I would even kick it up a notch. Designers, some of them had never even coded before in their entire lives, had never heard of a variable. Many of them had never even thought they could code. And so then we throw them into a program where they do a ridiculous amount of coding. In eight weeks, people are pouring in somewhere between 10 and 30 hours a week on top of their full-time jobs. I have some people who are, who are quoting, I don't even know if I believe them, but 45 hours on a single assignment, and, then, and each assignment is due in a week. Right, so we have these assignments that are really, really intense, and then we have one group project where we pair people into teams of three, and for the second half of the class, again, people who had never coded in some cases, in the case of designers, and never learned mobile before, they jump together and they just try to put together as polished and beautiful an experience for mobile as possible. So today, you're gonna see of those 40 or 30 teams, we've selected the top three from each platform, all right, voted by their own peers. So. Their peers pick their favorite three iOS, their favorite three Android, and their favorite three design. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you all three back to back, each platform. And then we have esteemed judges who I'm gonna let them introduce themselves in a second. And we're gonna select the best one from each platform. So again, while you're watching these, keep in mind that these are people that have, are brand new to these platforms. And I'm, I'm personally incredibly proud of what they're able to build. I hope they were as well. And I, I look forward to having all of you see what they were able to accomplish. So before we get to that, I just want to introduce the judges. Um, we have five judges this time. It's a great lineup. I'll let them introduce themselves, uh, starting with. Hey, um, I'm Vincent Coste. I work at Omada Health. And um, my background is pretty simple. I arrived at Omada. Uh, I helped build the iOS app, uh, grew the team, and now work mostly across web and, and mobile products. Hi, I'm Vicky Giza. I work at Skype. Uh, I am a product manager. Uh, I do product management there, uh, mainly focusing on web apps, so the Skype web client, Outlook.com, etc. I'm Angela Strange. I'm a partner at Andreessen Horowitz on the Deal team, looking at a lot of consumer and mobile apps. Uh, prior to Andreessen, I ran product for the Chrome for Android and Chrome for iOS browser at Google. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Jeremy Stribling. I'm at a small startup called Keybase. Uh, we do security, so we're looking to build uh, crypto solutions that everybody in the world can use just as easily as they use Twitter. Um, and we're, uh, I'm an infrastructure guy, so I, I do backend stuff and, and low-level client stuff. Hi, I'm Sebastian, and uh, I work here in this building. I work for Lyft. I've been with the company since day one, and I worked on pretty much everything we're doing and still uh, have been doing throughout these four years, three years, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. Awesome, let's give the judges a round of applause. Thanks so much for coming by. I uh, really appreciate it. So, all right, enough, uh, enough talk. Let's get down to uh, brass tacks. Now it's time to introduce, we're gonna do th each platform, starting with Android, then we're gonna do design, which is amazing, and then we're gonna finish up with iOS.